And what's going on, Crease fam? We're back again, episode number eight. You- so we're going to – actually, we have some explaining to do about what happened last week. Um, but before we get into all that, uh, what's going on, Casino? Chilling, boss. What's going on with you, man? Same old, same old, my man. Uh, kind of disappointed about what, what, uh, what all happened, transpired this past week with the – all the shoes pushing everything back, but um, we're back again. We're gonna let you know kind of what happened and what we have to look forward to going forward, huh? Oh yeah, it was a it was a whole damn shame, a whole damn shame. Still got notifications and ain't got no shoes. I'm hurt. Yeah, so I mean, you know, the L meter was quiet this week. Uh, there was nothing that really went out. I still I got a lot of raffle entries back from overseas raffles for the for the dunk lows for the St. John's dunk lows but other than that the L meter was stagnant this week big poochies <laughs> for sure all right so uh you want to kick this thing off with the uh, kicks of the day oh yeah for sure got to start it off right um uh, okay so my kick of the day is the Air Jordan 1 Turbo Greens um 2019 release um as y'all know these are pretty pretty popular um i do not like the new tagging that they put on the side of the shoe uh let you know it's from the spring 19 collection air jordan one high it's two different my favorite part is the tongue um i do like the contrasting colors uh, and then the tongue is kind of like a deconstructed tongue as well so that was a pretty neat trick um and then it has this nice like nappy kind of suede to it so it's also a nice little good take that they put on there they come with the alternative laces but i just kept in the whites so um yeah man kick of the day air jordan one turbo greens what color were the alternative laces um purple they're actually purple yeah I think it looks goofy if you put the purple laces in here. You know, it's it's, <laughs> it's just too offsetting. Uh, I do like it to be a little bit more of like just one or two tone. That that introduces a whole different hue, and I'm not ready for all that. Uh, the only other one I could think of would probably be like gray to match like the the heel collar. Um, but aside from that, yeah, the purple laces are no go in these. So gray would, yeah, purple would be doing. Purple be doing a lot, but that's like such a fire summer shoe. That's like the summer shoe, I feel like. Oh yeah, man. That was some short shorts and you know, a tank top. You are you're pool ready. I'm ready to go there. I'm ready to jump in anybody pool at that point. <laughs> for sure, for sure. All right. What you got, man. What you got? All right. Uh got to pull out a twenty fifteen here. Hmm. So Jordan Four, Columbia. This came out in January of twenty fifteen. Um, tumbled leather throughout. Definitely one of my one of my uh, more worn Jordan fours, <laughs> but it's it's one of my all white shoes that I've worn the most as well. Uh, it goes with so much. Um, I wear this with my Astros gear a lot and whatnot. But uh, these shoes came out, like I said, in January 2015. And um, back when I wasn't buying shoes on the rig as much as I can uh, nowadays, um, I was like buying myself one birthday shoe every year. So I wasn't blowing all my birthday money on shoes. I just told myself one pair every January is what I was going to get. And that year these happened to come out like a week after my birthday. So this was my birthday shoe in 2015 and definitely still rocking with these on the regular. Um, you see the midnight, like the dark Navy blue, but like the tongue is that legend blue. So mm-hmm. you get it on the, there's like a jewel jump man too. I think this is like, the beginning or I believe it's the beginning of the jewel jump man too. And yeah, so you got that going there. Um, but yeah, a little jewel on the, or a little legend blue on the insole, but yeah, one of my favorite uh, Jordan fours, I wear these probably way too often. <laughs> oh man, that's not a bad thing though. Yeah. My, my favorite part about those shoes are uh, they got rid of the netting and they replaced it with the leather. And then also with the tongue, they did the leather tongue too. So that was a, uh, that leather tongue, man. Yeah. yeah. This is one of my faves because of that alone, that leather tongue. But, yeah, everybody hypes up the netting, bro. I, I love I love my fours with the netting. Net fours are one of my favorite shoes in general. But that leather was something else for sure. It still looks so buttery today, I will say that. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great cop. Yeah, that's a part of the original uh, Lifestyle series of those fours. And I think they dropped originally in 99. But 
Yeah, oh, yeah. Rip- that's a great pair. Something like that when they came out. So, yeah, they're pretty cool. Pretty cool. Dope. Absolutely dope. So let's uh, let's jump right into it, dog. Let's get into this uh, fresh out the box. Uh, right. Yeah. This uh, this week's fresh out the box is gonna be steep. Um, we're gonna start off with something very near and dear to my heart because I remember that day in 2009 when these released and I was stuck here at home and I was not able to get to the mall in time. Uh, Via the desk of Jason Tatum, uh, we have a rumored, highly, highly rumored uh, Cool Gray 11 re-release. This time around, it's going to have a mesh upper versus the uh, original suede upper. Um, we all know the story about the cool gray. Well, any holiday Jordan release, you know, usually broke out and people trampling over each other just to get these shoes. And this was like the first time that I saw, well, like with my eyes, an Air Jordan 11 release uh, on the news. And, you know, the lines were like wrapped around the mall and like the release method on those were just awful, but you know, it hyped up the shoe. It made the shoe what it is to this day. And, you know, the Cool Gray 11s is probably one of those few pairs that, you know, people ask for a re-release almost like every year. So, right. That's one of the ones you see all the time being asked to re-release. Um, and, and I love the suede, right? The suede is like you get that luxurious feel from the suede, but the mesh gives it more of a functional, like, uh, you know, if you wanted to hoop in them, it would obviously be more functional. But um, just going out in everyday life, you know, you don't you have to worry about nicking them and being like, you know, done. <laughs> you have a big old mark on them for a while. So uh, I will say I, I I prefer probably this weight on most of my shoes, but um, but for sure this is a it's a nice little wrinkle if you're gonna keep releasing these shoes for sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the last time we got a Cool Gray Eleven was the Cool Gray Eleven Lows. Uh, I think those dropped in sixteen. 15 or something like that and they actually did not fit the bill i think the gray was a little bit too dark uh and it made the blue on the outsole a little bit too poppy it was too it wasn't even like icy blue at that point it was just like menthol blue so uh but those had a suede upper as well though um and but again those didn't hit the ticket as well as the original release so um I'm I'm actually looking forward to the mesh. Uh, I think the mesh provides a more breathable material. You know, you can wear it all day. You know, it'll actually look great next to the Concords and the other Bread 11s that dropped. So um, I'm actually looking forward to it. I love the little teaser uh, that Jason Tatum put out, you know, just not even captioned, just bow here. Uh, I got this direct from JB, so. Y'all check these out. <laughs> yeah, check these out. Check these out. Y'all, y'all looking for teasers. So uh, I am looking forward to those. Be on the lookout for those guys. Uh, I mean, this holiday, this holiday 11 is supposed to be the clears, uh, the ones with the translucent. Yeah, they need to go ahead and scare. These new 11 colorways are just god awful. They know what they're doing. Like, I think JB hides behind the 11 a lot because they know it's going to be an automatic sellout regardless of colorway. I've never seen an, an 11 shelves unless it was a low, but this one's going to be hard. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely one of his most popular models and one he knows is like you said, it's going to sell out and it's a, uh, it's almost a guarantee, right. For him. So, I mean, you, you know, which one I do, I, it's not a cool gray, but like there was that all sw- gray suede eleven that came out. You remember that one? It was like oh yes, one. yeah. That shoe, fire. That yeah. one, that one for the suede. That was like right up my alley for sure. I think those were pinnacles, if I'm not mistaken. But I'll double check on that. Um, yeah, those were those were super big heat. <laughs> yeah, no, those 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 ones hit the bill really well. Uh, I missed those. I think those were 400, uh, like 400 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Either that, it was it was a dumb price. That's why I, not a lot of people got those. But right, like, it's like the play school 12s, you know, just mm-hmm. high retail and all that. But um, moving forward, uh, I think we have a little bit of explaining to do from last week. Golly, man, I was so excited last week, and I was excited on release date as well. Um, so. 
there's no there's no telling nowadays guys but there has been a lot of pushbacks with these release dates uh last week we reported uh the space hippie pack was to be put out uh they moved that to july 3rd uh the saint john as uh, the saint john dunks not sbs but just regular dunks uh part of the be true not be true be be true to your school i believe that's the pack well part of the sneakers pack uh those got moved to uh july 1st i figured those out the day before i think you actually let me know about the saint john's and then the space hippies were the day after i i just wanted to throw my phone across the screen i (laughs) ruined like such a good weekend everybody was so prepared for this and we kind of knew that there was going to be a lull coming up we kind of saw it coming so this was like you know we just had junkie dunks we just had brazils we just had so much big popular hype stuff that we've been every weekend we've been zooming in on and then like we were ready this weekend and then it felt like they kind of wanted to push it back there's a lot of stuff going on in the world um so by all means do what they need to do but it did feel like that they're stretching it out trying to uh you know expand as much time as they can um with as, with as many as their big drops as they can for sure yeah um i don't know if it's in lieu of you know just you know the world events that are happening right now but man that that one really that one really hurt me and that one that one hurt me hard i was looking forward to getting that gotham screen on those uh the space hippie threes and and the same and the same john dunks i i, I needed that that would have been a, a great pick me up for the week but um it is what it is you know i'm looking forward to the next releases um uh, you know, but what brought around, I, I believe, what's going on is it's a conspiracy theory. So d- dig deep, guys. Dig deep right here. <laughs> dig deep. Big conspiracy. I think it's because they have a lot of those Flint 13s and a lot of those court purple 4s. They still have them sitting in places and they keep restocking them. So the day that uh, the St. John's were supposed to release, they re-released the Flint 13s. And then the day after, the day the Space Hippies were supposed to drop, they had um, the Core Purple 4s re-released, both on Champs with Foot Action. So, you know, I feel like they're just trying to get rid of the old stuff and then they have room for the new stuff because they don't want anything shelved right now. So I feel like there's no shelves to put them on. Um, so definitely can't shelve them. And just um i was really looking forward to those st john's too man that sucks so much but as far as what you're saying yeah i, I tried the the foot i uh, was it it was champs no it was foot finish line and champs maybe yeah one of those two but it was yeah, two foot much- action foot action that's what it was and uh man i sat there for a good hour and a half and tried on those flints and i did not i never even got close to getting through um but i, I definitely tried and i saw those uh, i have not seen the fours go back up but um yeah, it, it, like you said, they're just not – they don't want to put anything uh, – they don't want to hold too much stock back for when they do open back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, I think more and more states are opening back up slowly, but, you know, just like, you know, at this point, they should just have them sitting idle on the website. I guess they're trying to prevent too many people getting multiple pairs, but at the same time, man, you just got to move forward. There, there's, there's not much you can do about that, you know. Um, man, uh, cancel culture is really big right now. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of celebrities are getting canceled left and right. Nike went ahead and canceled the Puerto Rico Air Force Ones. Uh, Nike releases a pair of Puerto Rican themed Air Force Ones every year, part of the Puerto Rican festival that takes place in New York. A uh, very big Puerto Rican population out there. This year, it was canceled due to a misprint of the flag on the tongue tag. Um, This is another L Nike is taking on top of all the pushback dates. So, I mean, I just, I I don't don't even know where to go anymore with this. How did you mess up the flag and how is it not fixable? I, I mean, it's already printed backwards, but, you know. I saw. 
So, I mean, it was just, it was poor execute. I mean, like, whoever's working that assembly line, I know they got fired, so. It, I mean, yeah, that's got to come down by a couple people. But, yeah, I mean, for that many shoes, for them to cancel the whole drop this year, yeah, for sure. I mean, the parade, it, the parade itself is canceled. So, you know, it wouldn't even make sense for them to release the shoe with no parade going on. But, I mean, you know. Still- yeah, I just feel like it's an annual thing. You know, we wait – or we don't wait, but, like, we hear about these Puerto Rico Air Force Ones every single year, and it's kind of, like, something to look forward to in the sneaker world because, yeah, you do know it's kind of, like, coming every year. Um, and, like, I, I think last year – even last year they had the the same one got – or the Puerto Rico shoe got canceled because they put a, a Panamanian um, design on the shoe – and then right before it went out, they had to scrap that one, too. So it's two years in a row. Um, so, I mean, that's – DJ Clark Kent, I remember, went crazy last year because he, he is part Panamanian, I believe. And uh, he went in on them last year for messing that up. Um, but, yeah, two years in a row. Like, what – what, why? How does that happen? I don't know, man. They, somebody messing up over there. And, you know, to have DJ Clark Kent, who's a Air Force One aficionado, like – you know, he's just known – if he has to step out his realm and, you know, go talk to Phil, you know, go talk to whoever he needs to talk to over there at Nike Land to just make sure they're getting their, getting their stuff together. I mean, that, that – it says a lot, you know. Um, like, my another thought I have about it is, like, so the flag's upside down on the tongue. So, essentially, if, if you're looking down at your shoes, you see the flag right side up, right? I haven't thought about it like that. Um, perhaps, I'm just, okay, like, I think, okay, yeah, since you look over it, I believe it would be the right side up. But, you know, it's whenever you're wearing it, the person who's looking at your shoe, they're supposed to see it the correct way. I get it. And for sure, and you're right, but to cancel the whole thing, I feel like you could just try to flip some marketing and be like, I don't know, like, we want you to see Puerto Rico through your eyes or something like that, bro, or just and make something up. But to scrap the whole release two years in a row, like, I'd be a little upset. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, if I was Puerto Rican, I'd be super hot, you know. And just as a sneaker collector, I'm I'm hot for my favorite brand. So, you know, that's it's just two major L's, you know, and they need to bounce back. I mean, I can – what I – for – well, what what I like envision happening next is going to be there's going to be some unreleased pairs. You know, some people, somebody has a pair, a few people have some pairs, and they're going to resell, and they're going to resell for buku crazy, just like those Betsy Rosses. You know, last year the Air Max ones, or was it last year, or 2018, the Air Max one, the Betsy Rosses. Uh, you know, this was uh, they were releasing this right after. You know, I think dealing with something with Kaepernick. Um, anyway, they they had canceled the whole thing, um, saying that the flag on the back was incorrect, or uh, they they just scrapped the whole project. And you know, some people had their pairs finish line. They actually sold their stock. Um, people on StockX were reselling them for two grand. Some people on eBay they got bids as high as fifteen grand. So you know. Somebody out there is going to take advantage of this slip up from Nike, and they're going to have money in their pocket for sure for this. So, no, no those are those are always cool come ups when you see somebody get shipped something with like a backwards label or something, or like an accidental backwards swoosh back in the day and stuff. So, like that was, you know, it, it's it sucks for Nike for sure, but it's a interesting concept that they're. It's interesting that they're not actually going to go through it all with it after the same thing happened last year. So. I don't know. Like you said, just two big L's on that one. Um, mm-hmm. I will say, like, I had the flag been right side up, I think it was a very clean shoe. Um, it was all primarily white. It was easy to rock. It was one of the better Puerto Rico Air Force Ones in my eyes just because it was so clean and so easy. Um, I always think about the 2013 one. That's my favorite for sure with, the with like, the sketch on the back and it had, like, the X stitching on around yeah. the toe box. Oh, man. Yeah. Those are hard. Those go hard. Too. Yeah, they definitely do. That gets you a little Carmelo Anthony jersey. You know what I'm saying? Yes. A little Carlos Arroyo. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> man, you make those things pop so good, man. Um, oh, 
doubt, no doubt. Who's so. not popping right now is Adidas. <laughs> uh, so we reported last week that uh, Adidas was, you know, caught a red flag from uh, one of their assistant designers. Her name is Julia Bond. So Adidas responded uh, actually not too, not not that much longer after we uh, actually posted the episode and they uh, incorporated new policies on top of a $100 million increase on top of their 20 million. So they're going to be doing uh, $120 million over the next four years uh, to help combat uh, sy- sy- systemic racism um, and put that money back into black communities as well as they have a new policy in their workforce where uh, they will try to adhere to having at least 30% of uh, minorities, uh, mostly being black and Hispanic workers, uh, work under the the note of Adidas. This is all in lieu of a old tweet from I believe 2016, 17 or 18. So around that time, their HR, who believe it or not, her name is Karen, so their HR chief um, did not did not listen to uh, claims of uh, improper work or improper work environments uh, for those who are people of color, uh, and she labeled it as noise um, noise that needs to be silenced. So you know. I'm not sure if she's kicked the bucket yet with Adidas, but I'm sure it's bound to happen soon. (laughs) You're laughing. (laughs) You hit everything on the head there. That's for sure. Um, It's about time that the, I think you said they had to have a 30% minority uh, staff. Um, Everything should be like that. And it's ridiculous. You know, you're seeing the NFL fight that battle right now and they're rightfully just as wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, yeah. I saw even last, I think it was last Thursday, the 11th, they fired a vice president of retail because he had too many violations of, uh, what was it? He had too many violations, a company policy violations. So he just, too many people, you know, straight up filed a complaint on him and he is gone now. So um, they're definitely taking moves. Um, They're definitely... uh, Going in the right direction now, but um, this is no doubt a makeup tour. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you got to think about all the athletes that they have uh, under the Adidas brand who are African American. You know, James Harden, Dame Lillard. Uh, they've signed. Hell, they got Beyonce. Um, so I mean, she's not even an athlete, but you know, they they got the likes of um, the culture underneath their wing, and you know, to think that you know it's okay to internal internally you know disrespect your clients but then you know externally say that you know we're against all of this and this and that you know and racism you know re- repost nike but you know you're not you're not living up to it so right. uh, it's pretty good that you know now now it's being aired out for the public to view and you know hopefully something's going to get done about it pretty soon so and i mean adidas is just the front of this wave bro i mean everybody's it's coming for everyone. All of these racist ass companies, it is coming for you. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 The the light will be shined pretty soon here. Um and I mean it's gonna keep everybody on their, you know, on their toes, on their on their what what what's the phrase? Their P's and Q's. You, know, you gotta you gotta have your you gotta have your shit together, man. That's that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. So those HR departments better get it together and figure out what the hell they're doing. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but in lieu of all of that, you know, Adidas did have some crazy sales this past week. Anything, um, anything you wanted, if you wanted anything from Adidas, you could have got it for the low this week. <laughs> for the absolute low, you know, I know Messi's over there turning around talking about where my money. So, uh, yeah, uh, Adidas is damn near canceled culture, so they need to they need to stay on. Um, Moving on with the with the Black Power, uh, excuse me, the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, three designers, uh, some of them very notable. All three of them actually very notable. Um, we got uh, Jeff Staple. Uh huh. Talked about Futura pretty recently. Yeah, we've talked about Futura pretty recently. Um, graffiti artist, 
Then there's uh, Jeff Staple, the Staple brand. Uh, you know, his claim to fame has been the pigeons. Um, if you don't know what that is, go ahead and do your research because you're a little bit behind. And then we have uh, Fujiwara, uh, the creative director of uh, the Fragment brand. All three of those gentlemen have collaborated together to make a Black Lives Matter t-shirt under the Staple brand. Um, on top of your purchase of the t-shirt for the Black Lives Matter, um, you're automatically entered into a sneaker raffle uh, with three different prizes. You can get a um, a personal pair of Fujiwara's uh, Air Jordan 1 Fragments, uh, one of the hottest shoes of almost all Air Jordan 1 releases. Uh, it comes in his size of size 11 and a half. From Futura, you can choose uh, one of his custom made figurines. It'd be a, a one out of six. So there's only six made in the world and you would be receiving one of them. Uh, or you can get Jeff Staples uh, Pigeon Collection, which is probably the biggest steal of all of this. Uh, you get a pair of one-on-one -on -one black pigeons, never before released. Uh, there's a pair of panda pigeons that come in a limited edition bamboo box. And there are the Pigeon Fury Air, uh, Air Force Ones um, that released not too long ago. Um, all of them come in his size of a size 10. Um, the shirt itself was $40, and I believe you got 40 entries. Was that right? Yeah. It was $1. $1 every dollar you spent was – it was a minimum of $5, but if you spent five, then you get five raffle tickets. The shirt was $40. You get 40 raffle tickets. Um, I've seen people on Twitter doing like 100 and stuff and posting their receipts and all that. So um, there was tons of people on there. It is sold out on the Staple website currently. Um, the pre-sale is open from the 10th to the 12th from noon to noon. Um, and then I guess they just sold out everything else from there. But it is currently all sold out. Um, you were talking about the sizing and all that. It's super unfortunate. I, did, I didn't get to do it because I did miss the pre-sale. And then I just completely missed the whole thing. Um, but the fragments would have been the only way to go for us uh, due to sizing concerns. Absolutely. Um, the Panda Pigeons are one of the best ones that come out in the last few years. Um, the, the Pigeon High was a custom, right? So the, the Dunk High that they're giving away is a custom um, that they've done with the, I forgot who the customizer was. Um, and then the Air Force Ones are pretty sweet too, but man, uh, I would take literally any of those in a raffle. Those are all so dope. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and like you said, the sizing is what killed me. Um, but I mean, we talked off camera about, uh, you know, if we could get it in our size, like it would be an, a no brainer to go with the pigeons. Cause you know, even with the resale value on those, like you're pretty much set for, a while you're set for a good amount of time um i could have get i could have gifted you the air force ones <laughs> and that would have been nice because you know i love forces so um <laughs> but you know the 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 panda pigeons they were probably one of the hottest sbs of yesteryear which was just like i think two years ago they released them in february 2018 and then um the one of one black pigeons which nobody has so you know, you wouldn't even want to know what type of offers are knocking at your door for those. So, so much fire on those. Those are yes. so. Oh, yeah, that hurt. I'm still hurt about the panda pigeons too. Those are so fire. Yeah, man. So that is uh that's all we got right now for fresh out the box. That is the latest in sneaker news. Uh, our next segment is usually uh. Mm -hmm. Order confirmed, and like we said, this week was kind of dry. There was not that many releases, more overseas releases than anything, but things that you and I could obtain here, uh, there's really not much. The, the biggest one out, honestly, was probably the, uh, the Sneeze Magazine uh, collaboration with Reebok. They, uh, they collaborated together and made a, a Club C. Uh, which is one of Reebok's most classic pairs of shoes, aside from the classic. Um, so with the Club C, you have an embossed uh, Sneeze logo where the Reebok sign was. It's an all-white upper, white midsole, black outsole, and a, 
I believe it's also a black liner, a uh, sock liner. Right, it's pretty uh, black up top. It's got the black tongue, black liner, like you said, and everything below the laces and tongue are is all white. So it's a very interesting shoe. I get major like this. Is, this might sound odd, but I get major like Snoopy vibes from. Mm -hmm the font on sneeze <laughs> i don't know if they did that on purpose i don't know if they have any affiliation with that kind of stuff but i get major snoopy vibes from this shoe because of the color and because of the the uh, logo font <laughs> man i mean i've if charles schwartz was alive man i'm sure that he would want a little piece of that pie i'm sure he'd come for his royalties so um anyway the shoe released on june 12th for the price tag of 120 bucks they're already sold out don't try um, just a little history on Sneeze. Uh, Sneeze is a poster magazine. Uh, they were founded in 2008. Um, they're just known to bring light to, you know, what's happening around the culture. Um, you know, some great artists have done the cover, like the Migos. Um, mm -hmm. And I think in 2017, uh, Tyler, the creator, he also covered uh, a an issue of sneeze magazine so um, that's, cool. oh, that's pretty cool i uh this is not something i'm paying 120 dollars for uh i'm not sure if it's like i'm not sure if sneeze has like a solid following or if the collaboration is something that they are pushing or it's something that people buy more um but it's a black and white shoe i'm you, you're not pressed no i'm definitely not pressed no definitely not yeah, I mean, considering it's just a Klepsi, I think Klepsi's go for less than $100, like, without a collaboration. So, you know, with a collaboration, I'm probably charging now double retail price of just one pair of shoes. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is, for me, this is like an $85 pair of shoes. If I can get this shit to my house under 100 then that's like a, I feel like that'd be a good come up, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm just going to have to rebuttal on that, man. I, I, I always love collabs. I again when a when a manufacturer allows you know an independent source to collaborate on their shoe and you know have full expression on it even if it is just like a plain jane shoe like this one is i, I just feel like you know they taking you know a special course of action in their production line to you know try to get people to get the shoes so you know i'm pretty sure reebok had extra club c sitting around and they were just ready for any type of stamp or prints on it um reebok doesn't get as much love as the other brands do man it, if it's not ai or if it's not jj watt then you know nobody else really wants reeboks nowadays so uh, yeah. yeah i mean to me like you said like i said earlier they just kind of slapped a logo on a white and black shoe so um, I, I totally get the collab thing because I love it too, but that's what I was saying earlier. Like, I don't know if the fact that it's a collab just spiked it up by 150%, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I personally think it did, but um, interesting shoe. Yeah, I mean, definitely definitely not bad. And unfortunately, probably like a top 10 shoe for top five shoe from Reebok this year. <laughs> Aside from all the other AI lows that they were releasing, all the yeah. question lows. The oatmeal's, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> that, that, that's about it, but, you know, yeah. Um, I will be receiving these as a gift, but just like you said, I'm not going to – probably not going to drop 120 bucks on these for myself. Um, but it's okay. They're already sold out. I'm not going to be hunting for these. Um, and unfortunately, that's all we got this week. That's, like, literally all we even had to look at this past weekend to possibly buy. So um, that was – that sucked that was super frustrating I, I i'm hurting with y'all you know you know all the sneakerheads out there i i feel your pain i'm here with you uh, but luckily hopefully we do have some stuff coming up this week um we're gonna dive right into tracking order on some stuff we got coming up this week as a disclaimer <laughs> everything is tentative because we don't want to come back next week and catch heat for you know oh y'all y'all told me it was gonna come out this week Y'all say y'all confirmed it. We're going to give y'all some dates. We're going to let y'all know what they're saying. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, let you know. we'll let you know when they switch it up. That's why you got to follow us on uh, YouTube, on on Twitter, on Facebook. We post everywhere. So we're updating as soon as we find out that these are changing. We're posting and letting y'all know that they're changing. So definitely will give us a follow on all the, all the social media. Definitely. What we got up first? 
All right. So first, we dogged on the shoe. We dogged on a on a cousin of this shoe a few a uh, few episodes back. So we got the the third uh, rendition of the uh, Air Max 90. This one's gonna be the orange duck camo. So we had the Volt duck camo. Uh, I think we talked about that probably like three or four episodes ago. We just dogged it out. It was horrendous. Um, the gorge green was probably one of the worst greens they could have used. Um, but I'm be honest, I'm I'm a little bit on the other side of the fence for these. What do you think? I don't know what in the Elmer Fudd they were thinking about with this, but this joint is and they they're gonna run they're gonna run the shoe to the ground, dog. It's not gonna hold no street cred at all. Um I think I think I like the color better. This this is way better than the ghost green. By by a long shot, it's way better than the ghost green. Um, and I do love the color orange. Orange is one of those colors that's really hard to execute very well. Um, so I will say the execution on the shoe is great. Will I be trying for this? Yes. Unfortunately, yes, I will be trying for this. And I will wear them with an all-black unit, like usual. So um but aside from that, from from ghost green to infrared to these, I'm gonna say these are the best ones. These are definitely the best. Um, I'll say like the the red on the green, the first pair, the infrared pair, the the infrared really popped on the green. Um, I felt like obviously with the the green pair that we talked about last time, it was kind of like a green throughout, and the gorge green was just kind of like the popping green that came out. Same thing with these, right? So they're orange but you still get other orange hints throughout with the brown um, throughout the shoe. So I get like super like hunting vibes from these or, um, <laughs> or like Thanksgiving day vibes from these for some reason. Okay. You know what I'm saying like, they're very, very much a fall colorway. Um, but I'm definitely rolling with you on that. These are the orange pair is definitely number one on my list. Um, and then the infrareds and then a large gap and then um, the, the volt, whatever they were yeah they they ought to sell these at um cabello oh what's that story in cabello's cabello's and you know gander mountain and uh sun and ski sports like they, they these should be front and center at these type of stores whenever they drop these camo joints man like the come on. you know you're not next wrong, year, dog. Next year, I'm I'm done talking about these because this is awful. Those will be by, uh, those will be out June nineteenth. TBD, but TBD. <laughs> hard TBD for real. But those are uh, one forty, just like the last ones. So uh, we'll jump to the second pair we got coming up: a Nike Adapt Auto Max in a super fire colorway. Um, so we've been getting some. I've kind of don't like some of the colorways that've been coming out. Um, but we do get this anthracid um, colorway, super duper fire. It's a much darker colorway than we've gotten in the past. Um, it's got like a teal at the bottom. It's got like this weird wiry design along the uh, like the midsole there. But other than that, I think it's a super cool shoe. I like this colorway the most out of all the ones I've seen, primarily because of the black upper is super fire. Um, not something I'm dropping four hundred dollars on still, but it looks like a great shoe. <laughs> Come take my money, Nike. But this time you have to drop the shoe. Like, you for real have to drop it. Um, I'm actually in love with these uh, versus the infrareds. Now, now that I go back and look at the infrareds, the infrared version of the, uh, what are they called? The Auto Adapt Max or Adapt Auto Max. That's right. I think that one's right. Adapt Auto Max. The infrared version of this, the original that was like, you know, based off of the Air Max 90, those are not as bad. I was looking at the shoe aesthetically and then trying to picture that colorway on there with this one. This one's way better. I do love the all black upper, like the hits of teal. The I, I hate speckled midsoles by a long shot. I hate speckled midsoles, but the teal on the black is really hot. And then they have like that yellow check on there on the back. So I'm really looking forward to that. I am dropping $400 on these. This is swipe swipe just gonna be real easy just not even looking back at it just just bring them to the crib oh big swipe that's what i'm talking about hard swipes man just on june 18th so that's that's gonna be a big swipe for you my man but uh oh man 
while I'll be crying. I'll be looking forward to seeing those. And you're 100% right on the yellow swoosh. That thing, the little mini swoosh on the back, that thing is fire. Um, and I don't know if that's like a marble um, or it, to me, it kind of looks like when you're underwater, kind of like the, the visuals you get underwater and stuff. But it's super crazy little midsole uh, design they got going there. Yeah. For sure. This is like the closest to the Air Mag, I think, that they've gotten since the Air Mag. I mean, the Adapt BBs, like, of course, they're just basketball shoes, but – and this is the closest you're going to get to an Air Mag from the Air Mag, so. Good luck. Look forward to this, yeah. <laughs> this is the best attempt they've made at it, and so I'm definitely not mad at them for this. Definitely um, not. Yeah, but moving forward, uh, another shoe that dro- also drops on June 18th, um, back to the Jordan brand. Uh, we got the Concord Sketch 11 Low, <laughs> and this is going to be for the ladies. Mm. Uh, any of your <laughs> is your lady going to be getting these? <laughs> I was going to say ladies, but I, I didn't want to like just like burn you out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're trying to throw me out there, Trey. Okay, okay. I saved okay. it. I brought it back. It. <laughs> Trey think I'm a player. No, look, uh, one pair purchase. Cool. Yes, in her size, absolutely. Oh, mom's uh, gonna I'm not sure if they're going to actually have extended sizes. I've seen a lot of guys take more interest in this than the ladies. Um, with the Concord sketch, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but it has a purple sole, or is it a purple purple uh, patent leather? I see blue, yeah, purple purple Concord uh, leather, patent leather, translucent icy blue sole, um, black inner lining, Everything else is white leather. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But compared, comparing this to the, uh, what were they? The Concord Breads? Yeah, mm-hmm. the Concord Bread 11 Lows. I do like the sketches a little bit better. That purple hits. Uh, again, n- never a super big fan of the 11 um, other colorways. Like, you know, like this is another attempt at JB just taking your money when they can just re release something that you actually want. Um, these ones actually hit though the, you noted that earlier that you literally can put out whatever 11 you want and, and mm. it's gonna kill and it's gonna sell i do see these ones selling out um yeah you know if if she wants a pair she can get a pair <laughs> <laughs> no, those, those are sweet those are sweet my mom's gonna my mom's favorite color is purple and she's definitely gonna be hitting me up for those uh, those are pretty cool um yeah, man. How much are they going to be? 185. 180 is what they got them on here. But yeah. So pretty cool one. Jo- Jordan just putting out whatever he wants. So yeah. Uh, tentative. Yeah. Remember, guys, all of this tentative. And if you follow us on any social media platform, we'll be keeping you up to date on any release info that we receive. Yes. Yes. For sure. All TBD. Um, that's what we got for tracking order, I'm sure. There'll be some other stuff that pop up, like uh, going back to all the stuff we brought up last week. So you'll be looking forward to stuff like the hair sixes this upcoming week. A lot of that stuff just scooted up. As Casita just said, just follow us and you'll find out. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, <laughs> um, definitely plan on looking at a lot of uh, drops this weekend, for sure. Um, let's get into sitting on the shelf, my man. So finale for the day. Um, it kind of starts off with our man Kanye. He uh, He's planning on dropping these. Foam runners. Uh, I have some opinions that I, I don't feel like you would think I have on these, um, but I want to think. I want to hear what you have to say about these first. So, it is rumored that Kanye is going to release the Yeezy Foam Runners. We've seen them in a white colorway. We've seen them now in a red colorway as well. Um, he wants this to be the first. Uh, American manufactured air first American manufactured easy shoe um, that way you know the the American dollar keeps in circulation here um, he said they're gonna release sometime in June his birthday is also in June so I wouldn't be surprised at a release date somewhere around his birthday I'm sure it's like I think his birthday is like the 25th or something like that so I'd be looking forward to something like that um, I love the shoe, man. I'm on. I'm gonna be dead to honest. I love it, dog. I think it's the perfect summer shoe. People are gonna clown me for it. I don't really care. 
I think they're I think they're hot. You can wear them with or without socks. Um, they're they're such a statement piece, man. It's like Crocs on steroids. Like, like who? Why would you not want it? They look super comfortable, and you know that you're gonna turn heads everywhere you go when you're wearing this shoe. Um, it's been a, you know, it's it's a different take on you know on the aesthetic of footwear, you know, it's like, nobody's done this, you know, like a closed an all, all encompassed closed clog runner. Like no one does that. So I'm looking forward to them. They look super comfy. Um, I don't know what the price is going to be. It needs to be under $200 with all those damn holes in it. So, you know, if, <laughs> if I'm missing product off of there, you cannot be charging me the same price as a fully encapsulated shoe. So, um, yeah, man, I, I'm i looking forward to it, man. What, what, what's your take on them? Let me hear your opinion on this because I had, I had a vision of how you were going to see these, but go ahead and speak on it. Um, yeah, so you said a lot of good things about them. Um. And I agree for the most part. So this is definitely a shoe that I've, I've actually been looking at for a little while. And I do think they got some cool stuff coming out with them. So I, I don't, you know, I saw, I, I think Ferg was the one that, they said Ferg was the one that debuted the reddish orange pair. And I think that's when it kind of hit me. I was like, ooh, hold on. These might be kind of fire. So um, they're definitely going to come out with every color you've seen the last easy slides come out in. Um, you'll be seeing these for, for sure the next year or so. But yeah, I, I definitely think this is a super fire shoe. Like you said, it, it takes a whole new look on the aesthetic of anything we've ever seen. Um, and yeah, steroid on a croc on steroids is the best way to ever put this shoe because that's exactly what it is. You still get the breathability through all the holes and all that, but um, you're completely right on the price. Um, not paying two hundred with if I'm not even paying for laces, and you can see my feet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I think this is a this is a shoe that's like you're gonna stunt so hard at the water park in these shoes. <laughs> like you can take them literally from the water park to the gym, and then from the gym you can go out in them. Like I I know that's what was in his mind whenever he was thinking, man, let me make the shoe, let me make something where it's acceptable everywhere. You know, it's like all those times that we used to go to Midtown. You know. Right. It's like now now Yeezys are like the only acceptable sneaker, you know, at in, in some night spots, you know, some nightclub spots. Um, you know, you pull up over there and you know, these these uh these foam runners, you know, they're gonna be like, yo, dude's not wearing sandals, but you know, they're like, yeah, come on. <laughs> come on in, bro, you got it. Yeah, doorman just be like, You're killing it tonight. <laughs> no, there's I would I would rock these everywhere, and that's a really good point. It could be like his attempt at like the first shoe that you could wear all day and feel super comfortable in, no matter what you do. Um, I like I used to use Vans as like my thing that those were my shoe that I rocked them. It didn't matter what I was doing. Um, I used to rock Vans for everything. You know, you go to the river in the Vans, and you go to the water park in the Vans. You can go to school in the Vans. So it was just an easy to clean shoe and stuff like that. So. It's gonna be the same thing, bro. You just could. I mean, it's all it's all mesh and, and foam, <laughs> so it's just yeah. you clean. You're just gonna wipe them off. I mean, yeah. There's so many positives to this shoe. Um, we're gonna see what that price tag really looks like. I, I've actually seen it as low as like ninety dollars, um, but I, I want to hear that official word. I need to see that from Adidas, and uh, yeah, that that's on my list no matter what, though, for sure. Right now, yeah. Um... Easy gonna take over the summer with those, you know. And once once they let us back outside, and you know we can actually go to a pool party, I'm about to pull up on those. And it's, a da it's a dangerous looking shoe, and um, like even this, I'm not even gonna lie, I hated the slide, but the slide has grown on me as I've seen them in person recently. Um, although I still don't like how like really chunky it is, but um, this has like this has blown it so far out the water that I don't even care about the slides anymore, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was always a fan of the slides. Um, I love, like, the eggshell kind of shaping to it. You know, they do look more comfortable than, you know, you know your standard slide. Um, but, you know, 
I don't I, I don't really know. Like I I think the Yeezy slide itself it made it thicker. I, I think he just tried to take the Benassi and like just add more padding to it and like a softer sole. So that's what we've always wanted with the Benassi. <laughs> so that's perfect. <laughs> I nah man, look, Benassi's perfect as it is. Uh I think the Benassi's probably the best slide of all time. Like okay. there's no touching the Benassi. Yeah, I think I have to agree with you there. I, I think uh, it's definitely the the slide I've rocked the most in my life. It's the non-sneaker that I've rocked more than anything else in my life. Um, there's a few other ones up there, but definitely uh, definitely the most popular, for sure. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've spent $25 on a pair of Benassi's, but I'm pretty sure I'm well into like the $200, maybe $300 price tag on those. For sure, bro. You can go to Academy and get them in any color for $25. It's incredible, for sure. I've been rock, rocking those forever. Um, any other any other slides you've ever rocked? Uh, Adidas Superstars, uh, Climacools. Oh, those yeah. are pretty comfortable with the memory foam. Uh, I have had a pair of those. Some Jordan slides, some Hydro. The Jordan Hydros are also pretty comfy. Um, five. Say it again. With the five, it was like the Jordan 5 sole on them uh not necessarily uh most of the time the the hydros just have like the increased padding on the inside yeah um the- but it's, it's funny whenever they do take like the retro shoe and then try to make it into a slide stop it's it's a very corny attempt stop doing it like they used Ooh. to do it with the air jordan ones like they used to release like you know uh air jordan 10 and then they had the ongoing air jordan wants to go with it in the same colorway stop we didn't we didn't ask for that is there any soul that you would like like to see on a slide no honestly <laughs> absolutely not because when you do that when you do that when you take a sole off of a shoe and then you add that onto just a band of leather uh, excuse me it, well leather or fabric or whatever it it looks awful don't do that fair fair okay how about have big question have you ever owned or worn a pair of crocs worn yes own no and even when the opportunity when the opportunity presented itself to me to own a pair of crocs i still denied it to this okay. day, to this day, I will never own a pair of Crocs. So when you did wear them that one time, though, comfortability from one to ten. Uh, with with the heel attached, with the like the little heel tag on the back, comfortability. Eight out of ten, nine out of ten. Nine they're, out of ten. They're, day. they're just ugly. They're just ugly, but they're comfy. Okay, so yeah, Post Malone got to be onto something because a nine out of ten, that's that's high praise, man. That's high praise. And the mugs are soft, bro. Like I can't even lie, the mugs are soft. I love them. I just don't like the way they look. No, I feel you. I've never worn any, so I'm not. I'm not gonna um, downplay them too hard. Um, Nothing I've experienced. But I was watching. um, There was a sneaker battle recently with Chase B uh, via Complex. I was watching on YouTube, and uh, he pulled out, like, these UGG, I think they're called Dune Slides, and they, like, had, like, big sections over them, um, like, large padding on top of the foot, and they were super fiery. It almost looks like the, the buckle-up sandals, um, but it was, like, a much more swaggy version of them. Uh, they look really cool. I never envisioned myself even thinking about, like, an UGG or a Croc or anything like that, but he pulled them out at the end of the show, and I was like, oh, wow, those are pretty fire. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Birkenstock, they have a pair of sandals like that, um, which is, like, gaining traction right now. So, you know, sandal season, man, people – I guess people are caring more about sandals than they are about kicks. I, I guess it's because all of the uh, pushback dates and, you know, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I, I think sandal season's upon us. Uh, I'll still be rocking Benassi's to the day that I die. So, you know, that's where you catch me at. On, on that on like cozy season so have you ever thought about doing like uh i know there's that brand i kicks or i slide i, I slide you ever thought about getting any of those oh man we might get some custom creased 
you know, Crease podcast slides, you know, from my slides. I know Khaled took advantage of that with those uh, We the Best slides when he released those. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure our fans are ready for Crease slides. They would have to let us know down below in the comments if they would like Crease slides. I'm a sure they would. A raffle or something along those lines. Hey, you know, the best is yet to come. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, that's essentially going to wrap up this episode. So we really appreciate y'all watching. Uh, anything you got six you? Man, I know what it is. Mr. Your own back door, Mr. Botober, Tinker Blackfield. You just witnessed episode eight of the of the Crease Podcast. Uh, again, we gotta remind y'all to subscribe, like, comment, um, repost, reshare, show your mama, your baby mama, your baby daddy your cousin, your auntie, your best friend, and they whole family too. Um, yeah, man, y'all have just been creased, man. Um, and like always, ain't no half-stepping around here, y'all. So we will catch up for episode nine of the Crease Podcast. Um, until then, peace.